So welcome today to worship in the contemporary service, virtual contemporary service here at Community Church at Ocean Pines. My name is Dale Brown and I happen to be the senior pastor here and I'm joined by Austin who is our professional scripture reader. Maybe not, but he, he's here. Austin is in the process to become a certified lay minister along with Deborah Habistro, uh, so that they are persons who are serving in the life of the church as lay persons using the gifts and graces that God has given them. For Deborah, that gift is visitation. For Austin, that the gift is technical stuff. My son tells me that I'm old and that I don't know anything about technical stuff, so it's good to have Austin here to help me through. So today, as we gather for worship, let me pray with you. Eternal God, wonderful Christ, on this day we gather to worship you. Whether we are here at the church or at our homes, we give you praise and honor and glory. We invite you to speak to us in ways that are just beyond our imagination, that call us into an ever-deepening, ever-growing relationship with you. Help us to love the world more, because this is the world that you have made, and it's also the world for which you have died and risen again. Wonderful Christ, thank you. Thank you most of all for Jesus. Thank you for one another. And thank you for this opportunity, opportunity excuse me, to be together virtually or in person. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. So today we're going to be talking about a very special and wonderful portion of Scripture. Austin is going to read to you from Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. You might know this as a part of the Sermon on the Mount, and in particular, the Beatitudes. Austin, take it away. So, please hear the scripture as the pastor said, chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people rival you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the word of God for the people. <laughs> Thanks be to God. So Austin has read to you the Beatitudes from Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. And, and I want to take just a few moments to talk about them. The Sermon on the Mount is one of the most theologically important sermons that Jesus gives. And it has to deal with the topic of ethics. How do we live in the world? A lot of Christian people believe that it's really wonderful to always sort of be in what you might call a holy huddle. And that they're surrounded by music and videos and all kinds of Christian symbols and accoutrements that uh, kind of protect us from the evils and pains of the outside world. Now, that might be good for some, but I have to tell you that's not the example I see in Jesus. Jesus fully entered into the world, into the lives of hurting people, and loved them right where they are. Growing up, I was a big fan of Mr. Rogers. And, and, and Mr. Rogers used to always say, 
I love you just as you are. And I think Jesus says that to us, but he also says to us, I love you fully into what you can become. That Jesus meets us where we are and invites us to continue growing in faith, deepening our relationship so that we can become who God has created us to be. And, and, and Matthew chapter 5 through 7 form what is called the, the Sermon on the Mount. And they talk about a lot of really important topics. Some of the other topics that that Austin has has come after what Austin read is how do you deal with anger? How, how do you deal when you get mad? How do you deal when you're frustrated and hurt by another person? Considering adultery. Jesus talks in this section about divorce and, and, and love for enemies. And do you retaliate against people is it really an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth? And I still love the quote that Gandhi had that if everybody lived by the principle of an eye for an eye, the world would be blind. It talks about prayer and fasting and, and the future and, and all of these things as a part of how do we as Christians live in this broken and desperately hurting world. I've been deeply dismayed and very concerned by the rash of mass shootings. And these mass shootings are taking place all over the place. And I was sitting in Bible study yesterday with a group of ladies and we, how it's hard for us to understand how someone could take an automatic weapon, go to a school or any other setting and, and begin to, to indiscriminately shoot at people with the intent of killing, if not harming them. I believe that we all have the right to, to bear arms, and, and I don't disagree with that. I think that's a part of our Constitution, but that it needs to be interpreted. What I wonder is, are we as a people mature enough to handle that freedom correctly? and in a way that builds our connection rather than destroys the lives of others. And, and, and I wrestle with that. And I wrestle with the violence that I see on television. And, and, and I wrestle with uh, the violence that I hear in language. Not just the violence, but how we treat one another without realizing the eternal value and importance of each other. I really believe with all my heart that we as Christians are called to live very distinct, Christ-like, different lives in the world. We're not to be like everybody else, even though that is often the pull that we experience. Peer pressure can push us towards good behavior or bad behavior. I had an opportunity this week to, to be in church on Sunday morning and to listen to a children's lesson. And that children's lesson emphasized the fact that there are some things that are red behaviors, things that we should not do. And, and of course, in the sense, the context of being children, we, we shouldn't hit one another. We shouldn't take one another's crayons or, or such. And there are green behaviors, things that we should do that are, are positive at any age, child or adult. So maybe we can judge our behavior by trying those two colors. Are they red for stop or green for go? Jesus, in talking here in chapter 5 of Matthew, emphasizes a very different way of living. The context is there's a crowd of people. And being the Jewish teacher that he was, Jesus sat down to teach. As a preacher, I stand up behind a pulpit to preach, but Jesus, like a good Jewish teacher, sat down to teach. And he began by saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Now, none of us wants to be poor, not in terms of finance or in terms of spirit. But it goes on to say the reward 
that comes out of that is that theirs is the kingdom of God. A little bit later, he'll say, blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. We think of meek people as weak or as someone who is easily run over and pushed and or maybe controlled or forced to do something that they didn't intend to do. And Jesus says that they are blessed people. Another group is that blessed are those who are pure in heart. For they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers. For they will be called the children of God. It's a very counter-cultural way of living. It takes the values of this present age and the world in which we live and, and stands them on their head and says, Hey, wait a second. There's a different way, a better way, a more faithful way. And it's a different way of being and living in the world. So often we equate strength with being macho. And, and I go to the gym twice a week, if not more. And, you know, and, and, and Austin, I try to, to build muscle and build strength. Um, that's not what the kind of strength Jesus is talking about here. He's talking about strength of character, strength of faith, and I think ultimately he's talking about strength of love. And love is the strongest, greatest reality in the world. As I read through this text, and as Austin read it today, I was allowing my mind to wander. And I was thinking of persons whose lives represent each of these statements. And, and, and some of them were persons that I knew, persons who were a part of my personal family background. Some of them were persons of great faith and character. I'm a huge fan of St. Francis of Assisi. His love of nature and his gentleness and his kindness and his willingness to rebuild the church based not upon physical realities, but upon spiritual realities always draws me. And, and when I think of Francis, I see him throughout these Beatitudes. I think of someone like Doris Day and the Catholic workers group that she was a part of and how they were called to serve the poor and to, to give in themselves in extraordinary ways. And, and how Richard Cole's later came back and interviewed Doris Day and he asked her to write some information and a little bit of an autobiography about her love and her life, excuse me, and she couldn't do it because the only statement she can make is that she was so blessed to have had Jesus on her mind her entire life. And I think of a person who's a real hero to me, E. Stanley Jones and, and his faith in life and his commitment to listening first before acting and seeking to understand and value the comments of a disparate group of people. And I think of Mother Teresa all throughout these Beatitudes. You know, no one would have ever said that Mother Teresa was weak. But she was strong in all the right places, in all the right ways. A strength that was amazing. When asked one day uh, why she could serve the poorest of the poor in Calcutta and throughout India and the world, she said, because when I look in their faces, I see the face of my blessed Savior. I see the face of Jesus. And she will also say comments like, Small acts done with great love are important. We see in her an amazing strength, an amazing commitment, even though she wasn't physically strong. In fact, she was physically tiny. And one of the things that I really respect about her is that, you know, she was dealing with some horrible realities. And she felt it was okay to ask God questions to wonder why, to sometimes even feel that she wasn't good enough, that somehow she didn't measure up. And, and I've been reading a new biography, biography of hers, and it just 
makes me so appreciate more and more her life and her example, even as I as a pastor and all of us as people who follow Christ or who are somewhere on that spiritual journey seek to understand. But when I hear these words, I think most of all of the life of Jesus. They're Jesus' own words, and, and in many ways, he is describing himself even as we believe that Christ is perfect. Jesus is saying, when you want to talk about being poor in spirit or meek or hungry and thirsting after righteousness or, or being merciful or being persecuted, look at my life. And in my life, you will see this to perfection. So what's the one thing that we need to take away from this today? There are many things. If we look at the list of, of realities, poor in spirit, mourn, meek, hunger and thirst for righteousness, merciful, pure in heart, peacemakers, persecuted. All of these things are things that are part of the life, hopefully, of the disciple or follower of Jesus. But let me say it this way. It's okay to live differently for Christ. Sometimes, in fact, our lives are a little bit odd because we follow Christ first rather than conform to the patterns of the world. It is okay to emphasize these qualities and for people to wonder if we've lost our minds. It's okay to be different for Jesus. People might wonder what's wrong with you. People might question you. But the thing that I can guarantee is this, that when life is difficult, they will look for you as a source of hope, as a friend, and as someone who can help them find the way ahead. Don't be afraid to live into the example of Jesus in his words and in his actions. My prayer, my hope is that in your life, these words will be true. Friends, I love our world. I am so amazed at the technology and the beauty of our world. I was driving down Route 589 this past week, and right across in front of me walked a red fox. And I thought, you know, that red fox is a creation of God and is absolutely beautiful. I love hearing the geese overhead. I love seeing people of all ages do things that are just really, really amazing. But our world is broken, and it needs a way ahead, and it can't continue simply as business as usual. We can't continue to adopt the ethics or values of our world as it exists today. We desperately need each other, and we desperately have to care for one another and love one another, those that are the same and those that are different not be threatened by or scared of persons, but to embrace them, to hear their stories, and to learn from them. It's okay to be different like Jesus was different. And because Jesus was willing to be different, he offered to the world something we need today. Hope and love. Hope in the sense that there is another way, a better way, a higher way, a greater way and love, you all know what that means. The text tells us greater love has no one than that he laid down his life for his brother or sister or parent or friend or person he has never met. That love is what sustains us and changes us. So to quote a, a professor of mine in seminary, go out and love the socks off people.
May God bless you and let us pray together. Eternal God, as we come to the close of our time together, don't let, the, don't let this just be an exercise in thinking and talking. May it be something that changes our lives into doing. And now may God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you now and forever. Amen.